Previously on the Shade Tree Surgeon Channel. One last act of defiance. We'll run the red light at Folsom State Prison. That one's for Mr. Cash. Well, what do you guys think? Do you think a shovel head can be an adventure bike? Only one way to find out, baby. And we got a thousands of miles to go still. Watch for rocks. How can, how can I not see them? The whole place is made out of a big old rock. Let's see how brave I am. This brave. <laughs> Whoa. That goes all the way down. I, I ain't seeing 25 yards of straight road. It was just nice to stand there for a moment and ponder the manner of things beneath the shade of the poplar tree. Aha! Uh -huh. I see civilization! Woo! Baby! The old shovel's got it in her! Yeah, it's got no clutch on it. This is pretty sketchy, but uh, let's go ahead and send her, bud. We don't have much of a choice, do we? And now for the thrilling conclusion of a 1979 Shovelhead's cross-country journey, 4,000 miles from Portland, Oregon to Tampa, Florida, the final chapter. Day two in the busted Nooks garage. I have to not adjust my push rods because apparently that shovel head motor is indestructible. I just walk right outside and that's the freaking view, man. Insane. And he just tells me, he goes like, dude, I don't, he goes, I walk outside sometimes and I don't even freaking see it. Unparalleled hospitality at the busted Nooks garage. Got all my crap? I think I got all my crap. Well, thanks to my man Jason, I now know how to adjust the push rods on a shovel head, but these didn't need it at all. The undefeatable shovel head. I say that, I keep saying the undefeatable shovel head. Let's see if it starts. <laughs> like a freaking top, baby. Utah, baby. Not just Utah, and I wish I could beat up with that ride while I'm here, but seems like a really cool dude. I'd love to meet him, but Utah, as guided around by my very good friend, Jason Busted Ducks over here, and he's gonna take us to the Grand Canyon, just not uh, counting any of the other motorcycles he's owned, but he's put over 100,000 miles on that soft tail right there, man. And that that's a guy who, on that soft tail, will just like drop out a freaking iron butt out of nowhere, man. And if you've ever ridden one of those uh, soft tail slims like that, you'll know that, uh, not exactly the most freaking long distance bike in the world, okay? And my man here is a true believer. I will very easily say that Busted Nux is way tougher than I am. I don't know, man. It's one of those things where YouTube has just given me so much over the years. And one of the most amazing things it's given me, in my opinion, is my friendships all over the world. And literally, Busted Nux has been following the channel and we've been talking for like the past eight freaking years. Pretty phenomenal, man. YouTube just makes the world a smaller place for me. It's so nice. Maybe one day if I try real hard and I concentrate and I do my very best, my butt cheeks will be as ironclad as Jason Busted Ducks over here. But for now, I still need all my special little balms and ointments and salves and my, and my little sheepskin to, to be able to do all these miles. Like I know there's people in the comments who are always just like, I don't know how you do those miles. Well, I'm showing you how I do those miles with all my stupid little bombs, ointment, salves, and my little sheepskin. That's how I do it. Just as crazy to be here in St. George, just riding through it like, this is just like a street in the town. And it looks like this, insane. I love it. My man Jason also goes by the credo of just like beers, just like gas, get the round. There's nothing lamer than when a group of friends walks into a bar and says separate checks. I haven't quite quite gotten the hang of this dual tank thing yet. Yeah, I like, I fill both of them up and then it leaks every time. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. If you're not supposed to fill both of them up or some old head in the comments is gonna be like, you absolute moron. This is how, how do you not know how the shovel had dual tanks were? Well, I guess all Harleys were dual tanks back in the day. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes dudes with shovel heads ain't the friendliest dudes. We're changing that. A kinder, gentler shovel head. <laughs> ah, my 
my first time seeing Utah in the day on the back of a motorcycle and it's absolutely as gorgeous as I hoped it would be and as full of adventure bike riders as I thought it would be too they're freaking everywhere makes sense just like Everride always says this is an adventure adventure bike riders paradise out here ah damn imagine this being your backyard absolutely wild dude I swear I swear and I'm sure it does to everybody who lives here and is really into riding. I can't imagine waking up every day and not just having having that horizon call to me. Just look at getting on this road and being like heading to work and and going, not today, man. <laughs> I'm 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 not turning off for work, man. I'm just heading straight for that horizon. I'm hitting the road. It just is. It promises so much adventure. Phenomenal. Jason was telling me a lot of this stuff is like lava flows. I don't know which parts of it are, but <laughs> you see how maybe if you aren't here, or maybe just through the camera, it all just looks like the same brown rock between California, Nevada, Arizona, and Utah. But trust me, at least in person, it looks completely different. This doesn't look anything like the stuff that we were going through earlier. It looks totally different. Man, I really hope it does look different to y'all on camera because I would tell you it looks completely different from both Nevada and California. Well, about to cross another one off the bucket list, baby. Zion National Park. I hate to keep up bring, bringing up Everride, but I have watched, I've been watching Everride since he had like 10,000 subscribers, maybe even earlier than that. I really credit him for a large portion of the success of my channel because his like how to moto vlog series, which is old as dirt now, but still, I think it still contains like great knowledge, although some of it might be outdated just because things about YouTube have changed. We remember watching that and that's what I based my my entire work ethic of my channel around. You know, not how I made videos, but my, my work ethic of how I approach video creation. Everride has been such a gigantic inspiration to me. I literally like, I have seen this in his videos so many times. I've seen the scenery and this landscape in Everride's videos and now I'm here and it's freaking amazing. Yes, I wish I had a dirt bike. And I remember, maybe, you know, I would even take my ADB Sportster. I'd even take all Dirty Bastard, the Adventure Sporty. I'd even take that out here. But I'm not thinking about what I could have out here. I'm just gonna enjoy what I do have out here. If you had asked me freaking 10 years ago, when I first started really like watching a lot of a lot of other YouTube channels like Everride, like motorcycle channels and stuff like that, all the places that I saw in their videos, if you would ever ask me, would you ever go there? I'd be like, no, man, I want to so bad, but I'll probably never make it out there. Like, I'll probably never get there myself. Shit, I think it's longer than 10 years now. I'm mean, like over 12 years ago. I would have never, never in a million years believe I'd be out here. Here I am. It's been a lot. It's been years and years and years of hard work to do it mainly mental mainly just getting over myself and saying hey just go things don't have to be perfect don't let good get in the way of perfect when it comes to taking an epic trip i don't even let mediocre get in the way of good and half the time i don't let passable barely avoiding death get in the way of mediocre and sometimes i'm a little reckless sometimes i do things the wrong way i definitely roll the dice a lot of the times but I'll tell y'all, if I didn't do it like that, I wouldn't be here right freaking now. I'm not telling you to do that. You know, the way I do things is not for everybody. I, I really take a lot of chances sometimes. But holy moly, man, I would never be on this motorcycle about to ride through Zion in Utah if I didn't just go, you know what? Fuck it, dude. Roll the dice. Throw it in the wind. Let's just see what happens. Twist the throttle and point it in the right direction and just go. What in the hell are those things? Are those tents or houses? Is this a glamping thing? Are people camping in those? Glamping? Like why not just, I mean, if it's gonna be glamp, just put a roof on it at that point. <laughs> oh wait, no, I see. They're just like knocked together with plywood, it looks like. Still, I mean, whatever. I don't have anything against glamping. I got nothing to prove to anybody. I'll sleep on the bare ground outside if I got enough beers in me. I'll sleep in a tent. Shit, boy, if someone else wants to pay for it, I'll stay in a five-star hotel. I got nothing to prove. I'll do just about anything. And if you only go camping primitively because you got something to prove, not because you just enjoy it that way, uh, I think you're doing it the wrong way. Just like this. I'm sure there's some people out there that would be like, I would never go there unless I was on an adventure bike. I could go off-roading. 
I sure would like to do that. That wouldn't bother me at all. What does that mean? I'm not gonna do it because I got the chance right now to do it like this? Hell no, man. Don't wait till it's perfect. Well, in that case, the case of glamping and primitive camping, they're like, they don't want to do it perfect. They want to wait till they can do it shitty. <laughs> so don't do that either. I guess the same could be said for this old shovel head, huh? Some people say, well, I wouldn't take a cross country trip on some namby bamby fancy gold wing or touring bike. I want to do it like a real man on a shovel head. Well, I'm enjoying like seeing how the people who inspired me to ride and the I've been seeing, enjoying seeing how they did it on a shovel head all, with all its vibrations, its quirks, and its low top speed on the highway. I am really enjoying that. But do you think I wouldn't do this on a gold wing? I would absolutely do it on a gold wing. Closer we get, the crazier it looks, man. It is just, for, this is just insane. It's like how, it's crazy how different it can be. It's like how it's so, it's similar obviously, but it's so freaking different. Like look at all those little, all those little jagged peaks at the top and, and all these flat surfaces. It's still just bugging me out, man. And this is probably something I should have learned in like high school, like how things are, rocks are formed and mountain ranges are formed. But you know, I didn't, I didn't really like school all that much. It really wasn't for me. So I didn't go very much, but hey, now as a uh, slightly stupid, well, a pretty stupid adult, I get to just sit here and wonder at them instead of knowing how they're formed. I don't know, which one's better? Just making up your own mind and making it up in your head <laughs> or actually knowing the truth? I don't know, man. I got a big imagination. So I'm always just like, instead of being like, well, the magma flow and the lava and the tectonic plates smash together and this happens, I'm just like, no, 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 no. Listen here, chief. That's the spine of a big old lizard. And uh, those two are two giant tortoises that got into a fight and beat each other up. And uh, then they just died there and them's their shells. And that's where uh, a big old giantess, one long, tall, deadly and blissful Ellie dug her fingertip across the earth and created that channel. Like, I, I, you know what I mean? I have more fun doing that, but hey, that's just me. Calling that place Majestic View Lodge and oh my. <sighs> Dude, they mean it. Wow. Rounding that corner and I'm just like, yes, majestic is the correct word. That we ain't even in Zion. I mean, we're in Zion, but we haven't even officially entered the national park yet. And it already looks like this. Yeah, they're, they're seeping. It's probably the only thing keeping the freaking tubes from leaking was the crust around them. And maybe I'll just build up enough crust on the rest of the trip, they'll stop leaking by the time I get back to Tampa. I know it's cliche, but the whole place looks like a postcard. This canyon is just, ah, uh, every direction you look. That's why I got the 360 cam going, because I'm like, man, Later on, I want to be able to enjoy every, I'm not going to post the whole 360 video, I'll probably post portions of it, but I want to enjoy every single little part of this. Because <laughs> I, 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 if, if my head could turn 360 degrees around, it'd be spinning like a freaking top right now, just trying to take all this in. So it's definitely one of those times that I don't mind going slow. There's plenty of awesome roads that we can freaking like go fast in and really kind of push it a little bit. I just want to enjoy every freaking second of this on the back of a motorcycle. How is this real? <laughs> it doesn't seem possible. Again, because like I said, because I've seen this stuff so many times in other people's videos, ever ride and other people out here. And I just, it, you see it so many times on TV and in other people's videos that you see it for yourself and it looks like a movie set. It doesn't, doesn't look real. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> speechless. I'm at a loss for words. It's like, how do you even capture the scale of it in a picture? It's just wild to be, sit down here and be like, wow, that's huge. And then look at the top and like see a whole ass tree up there and look at the tree down here and be like, that's what's going on up there. That's how far away that is, how huge that is. 
All right, let's see the next wonder around the corner. Talk about YouTube making the world a smaller place, and it has. It has made the world a smaller place for me, but then I ride through a place like this, and I look up there, and I go, the world is not a small place. I am a very, very tiny person in a very, very large world. <laughs> of massive things happening over millions of years and we're just just this briefest speck with my stupid little cameras on this stupid little motorcycle just winding along this garden of the gods this monument to this planet just hurtling through the earth which in itself is tiny ah! too much too big I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm teetering on the edge of wonderment and existential crisis right now. Do I stare into the void with wonderment or do I scream into the void with terror? A little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. I really love that Busted Ducks back there just goes, you know, man, whenever I come out here to Zion and I run through this, he said, he said he buys the annual pass every year and comes and does it every once in a while. And he said every time he comes through here with somebody who hasn't been here before, which he hosts a lot of people, you know. My man Warbeard has been here, Psych Nurse Chris, uh, just like, uh, I think Charlie the Traveling Chopper was here at uh, the Busted Dunks Garage. Like, he's always hosting cool people and then just, you know, a bunch of other people who are just awesome people who don't necessarily have YouTube channels or any kind of social media. But he says every time he takes somebody up here who hasn't been here before, it's like brand new to him. And you guys, if you guys watch the channel all the time, you know I feel that way about Florida and Ellie and taking her along all the all the spots there, all the all the famous Tampa spots that just feel brand new again. And it made me feel so good because sometimes you talk to people and they're like, oh yeah, I don't even see the mountains anymore. And I love that my man back there is like, yeah, you know, I take new people up here all the time and I see them. I see them again. That's just the fucking best. Dude, I can't believe how long this tunnel is. This is freaking awesome. We are under so much rock right now. <laughs> I just, I, how many millions, billions, however many tons of rock are right above our heads. I'm not claustrophobic, but imagine if you were claustrophobic, that might bother you. Man, it would be a hard fought battle between this place and Yosemite. Me and David were in Yosemite a couple days ago and I just didn't think anything could top Yosemite National Park and now here I am in Zion. I'm going like, holy crap, I don't, this might be better. And if it ain't better, it's uh, probably too close to tell for my dumb ass. All right, well, went to adjust my push rods last night and ended up messing it up. And it didn't have an oil leak, but it has one now. But I think that we just kind of hammered on them. I took a pair of pliers and held it on there and tapped it with a hammer. And we did see them move down a little bit. And the other ones move up a little bit. So hopefully it's not that the seals were just only held in place by the old crusty oil. And hopefully it's just me not getting them seated properly. Right, let's run it and find out. And uh, if it leaks even just, if it even leaks less oil, that's okay too. Because it was leaking a lot. Good thing it started so close to home. <laughs> yeah, I will say, like, if we were in Florida, maybe that oil leak would be okay. But uh, 2,500 miles from home, that's a little, a little troubling. So yeah, uh, the worst part of this shovel head is me. The fact that they're just even like two mountains or peaks or whatever you want to call them, just like right next to each other, are completely different colors, blows me away. I think I, I'm getting the uncanny valley thing now because it just, it all looks so perfect and so deliberate that you're looking at this and it's that uncanny valley feeling of going like, this looks so deliberate the way everything's placed because it's so beautiful that this couldn't possibly not be planned, that the, this couldn't possibly not be like somehow man-made or something like that. And you know, I'm not religious at all. But, you know, I guess I can see it when you see people talk about the, you know, creationism and stuff like that, which I do not believe in. But looking at this, like, I can see how people look at this and go like, yeah, this has to be made by somebody. This, this didn't just happen. But, of course, the reason why it looks so beautiful, just like Schrodinger's cat, man, it's, uh, it's not beautiful until we make it beautiful by looking at it until human beings gaze at it, until we look at it and say, 
this is beautiful, before that, it's nothing. With, without us to perceive it, what would this be? So, I mean, we're, we're in that weird catch-22 thing, is it? Would it be beautiful without humans? Allegedly, but if a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? <laughs> you know, we, in order for beauty to exist, mankind has to exist because it is our mind that places the ideal of beauty onto anything. I don't know where I was going with that, but there you go. Dipshit philosophy 101 for the day. Now, why don't I shut up and enjoy the rest of this? Dude, I think it stopped. It's all the oil that's there. Yeah, yeah, it's the oil that was there. Oh, well, hey, the shovel headed by. It's besides that little smoke at the tailpipe, but we won't worry about that. Lubricated spark plugs, baby. Not only did we just experience the absolute breathtaking, murderous beauty of Zion back there, but I also think I just fixed the oil leak. I mean, I caused it too, so that was a little worrisome being this far from home. So I think I think we're good now. We're keeping all all the precious fluids inside the engine where they belong. You know, it might seem like to you guys that I'm like some kind of world traveler, super experienced, like, by the way, not world traveler, I don't even have my passport, but I'm still pretty new to traveling. One of the reasons I'm so passionate about it is I never realized how easy it was to just go, especially on a motorcycle. Something you get 40, 50 miles a gallon to, to just go. <laughs> you know, even with gas prices the way they are now. And I was in, so enamored with the fact that I could just be somewhere else, that I could be a thousand miles away on my motorcycle in 20 hours experiencing something else. I was just like in love with just burning miles. And we're still like keeping a pretty good pace. Like the first day I did an iron butt, we did like 500 miles yesterday probably do like 600 miles today but for me the way i usually do things dude five or six hundred miles is a lot less than i normally do in a day now i feel like i'm learning i don't know if it's stop and smell the roses or enjoy it a little like what what is around me a little more than, than just enjoying the feeling of getting somewhere else but i'm really really liking that right now and the fact that this thing only goes 70 miles an hour and even then it's not super happy doing 70 and that you have to stop all the time and that you have to check the oil and you have to really maintain this bike while you're on the road. To be honest with you, it kind of forces you to take your time. I don't know, just there might be something there. This is my, I've been, you know, very far distances on vintage gold wings, but a vintage gold wing might as well be a brand new bike for the way it runs. This is my first time going super long distances besides my chopper trip on a vintage motorcycle that really needs care and attention. You have to pay attention to what it's doing. It's making me slow down. I really, really think there's something to that. I'm not quite sure what it is yet, but it's something really cool. And it makes rolling the dice on this 44-year-old Harley Davidson, a 79 shovel, just that rolling the dice on it and being like, I'm gonna pick it up sight unseen, change the fluids, put new tires on it and hit the freaking road and that's it. That's a part of it. It's not just seeing the country. You could do this in a car. I could do it on a reliable bike doing it like this even though i wouldn't if i couldn't do it like this i wouldn't let that stop me from doing it but this is also just really special in some way not sure what it is yet more on that later i guess we are climbing now Ooh, ears are popping baby the shovel is abiding for now we got the oil leak stopped we got some fresh spark plugs in thing is running like a top well maybe like a uh badly made dreidel, but uh, it's running, it's running, okay? So we just found out there's not any hardware store open. Uh, I also just found out that my man Busted Nux had an extra freaking nut on there <laughs> that's gonna work for my exhaust. So this is literally fixed in minutes. This is like the easiest, well, maybe not the easiest fix, but uh, damn, damn close to being up there for the easiest thing that could, uh, something that could potentially be disastrous that worked really really worked out really really well well that sounds a whole hell of a lot better literally my man pulled a half inch nut right off of there <laughs> again phenomenal man let's see if we can get through the rest of the day without incident you know as far as problems go Nothing's really been that bad. We've solved one oil leak, we've solved one exhaust leak, and uh, we 
also so have a battery that the connection keeps getting loose on. But hey, I think we're doing pretty good so far. I'm all paranoid about the shovel now because I just had like a couple of problems right in a row. And I mean, not super paranoid because uh, I never get that paranoid. Going to see the Grand Canyon doing these twisties on the way up there. And I'm just like, man, I feel like I'm losing power. I'm, I was worried. I was like, dude, that exhaust was hanging off. What if I fucked up the valves or something? What, what happened? Then all of a sudden I realized we are like at almost 8,000 feet and still climbing again. So uh, basically it's just not happy again. And yeah, <laughs> I don't know how this thing is gonna handle climbing the million dollar highway. Cause I think that goes to like 12,000 feet. And at eight, 9,000 feet, this is struggling. Okay, going down again, good. I'm a little closer to sea level. We're gonna have to squeeze some power out of this old thing. Because this was loose again by the time we got up there already and I thought it'd be so freaking easy to find another uh, another half inch nut on this bike that I didn't need but everything's 9 16 almost everything on here so uh, luckily the mirror so I think that the mirror bolt is gonna work and I'm just gonna roll with one mirror we'll see how if that holds or not oh yeah dude everyone's like Josh you do all these miles you're so tough I'm like I just want my gold wing right now man <laughs> well that definitely sounds better again but we've heard this story before <laughs> and honestly one mirror is fine in fact the mirrors you, they don't barely work anyway so literally no mirrors would have been fine as well i can still hear it ticking uh, but not like it was before i'm going to check it when we get off of the grand canyon and see how bad it is but i imagine that that exhaust gasket is probably not doing the best after those miles just sitting there hanging around flapping in the breeze but i'll take a small exhaust leak all day long over what was happening trust me <laughs> david goes like what i really want to do is see some bison in the wild well here you go bud oh, hopefully the bison don't mind me fixing my bike over here buffalo are uh moving this way and buffalo bison I'm not sure which ones they are I swear we didn't stop here to take pictures just to fix the bike sorry buffalo but uh, i do see lots of fail videos of these things chasing people around so let's not get on one of those unfortunately it looks like my exhaust stud i don't know if it's stripped out or what exactly this is so cool still just uh absolutely amazing to be out here although slightly stressful with the exhaust stud uh, let's go see the Grand Canyon and get back to civilization and see if I can't do something about that. These guys look less than impressed with the motorcycles. The Grand Canyon, baby. Well, leaking exhaust, burnt valves or not, man. Here we are, baby. That is insane. Looking into that, I, I've heard so many people who've been to the Grand Canyon just go, oh yeah, it's just a big hole, no big deal. That is not just a big hole. <laughs> Looking at that is and knowing that that was done by a river by a tiny stream of water over time that that did that that wasn't like tectonic plate shifting that was done by a stream of liquid i'm sorry man i could never just look at that and go yeah that's just a hole that is insane i don't know how i'm gonna ever just remember the scope of this it's not even the image that i want to burn into my memory but it's just the scale and the scope of the vastness of this that I just want to commit to memory. To like look down here, see that tree right there, that tree right there and see how big they are. And then look to the other side and what looks like just a little bit of moss over there is those trees. <laughs> Maybe if you knew where to look, you could see a person standing over there, but I doubt it. Look at those mountains off in the distance too on the plane. Isn't that crazy? Here's this big hole and then you can see the plane and the mountains. They're off in the distance on that. No, it's not even picking them up, but it looks really cool. You have to take my word for it. <laughs> or don't take my word for it. Come here and see for yourself. If anyone ever tells you the Grand Canyon is just a hole in the ground and there ain't no point in going to see it, tell them to piss right off. That was amazing. Now, let me get, <laughs> let me limp this poor shovel head out of here. Although I did, uh, I did call in my 1-800-ASH-SHELBY uh, favor and Shelby goes, oh, loose exhaust? Sounds like a trouble head, <laughs> normal bullshit. He goes, you know, you should get it fixed, but also you could probably ride it all the way back to Tampa like that. So I don't know, man, maybe we'll just ride this sucker all the way back to Tampa like this. <laughs> Who knows what happens, but on to Colorado next, baby. And when the bison want to cross the road, you just go ahead and let them. <laughs> and Jason busted knucks, showed us all around St. George, took us to Zion, the Grand Canyon. 
<laughs> All with about 12 hours notice. What a freaking dude, man. Love that guy. I do know that even though the bike is leaking from places that it shouldn't be leaking from, exhaust is coming out of the wrong places, oil shouldn't be coming out of anywhere, uh, especially out of the exhaust. But uh, hey, anyway, besides all that, I'm having a freaking amazing time. It take more than a bike being close to breaking down and leaving me stranded in the middle of nowhere to spoil my fun. So far, the Lowrider ST, uh, I don't know if it was a competition between the Shovelhead and the uh, Lowrider ST, but if it was a competition, the Lowrider's definitely winning. The seams are starting to show on the 79 Shovelhead right now, and uh, it's only day five and we're not even halfway across the country yet and we've still got the million dollar highway to do we'll see i mean here's the whole thing about this shovel and making it home and all the things that might or might not break on it you know something else could go catas cat catastrophically catastrophically wrong um i mean i could leak all the oil out the engine could seize up i could burn a valve i could spin a bearing all those things could happen but i'll never know if they're gonna happen unless i go ahead and find out so uh, how can i say all those things will happen unless we just freaking send it the rest of the way home and see i want to know as much as you guys want to know if it'll make it home or not so <laughs> let's let's let her rip baby what's the worst that could happen God. Fucking wow, man. Wow. I can't believe we just like opened up on this. Oh, dang, dude. Somebody pulled over to smoke some weed. I would too, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. They got the right idea. I just freaking passed that and someone's like, yeah, this looks like a great place to light up a big old nasty hog leg. That last little part up there, coming out of that and just having this explode out in front of you, I could do that over and over and over and over again. I know. Freaking amazing. It's gotta be 40 miles of splendor, just amazing. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's gotta be like, cause the towns over, that we're going to is over there. That's, and I think it's like 50, 60 miles away. You can almost see it. Is that a bridge there? You can almost see some stuff, but I can't really tell what it is. I know, right? Well, I'll tell you guys, the number one secret to riding a shovel head cross country is a nice pair of earbuds. That way you can't hear all the shit that's going wrong with the motor. Ignorance is bliss, baby. Wow, I can barely hear that exhaust leak anymore. It's like these skull candy earbuds fixed my exhaust leak. Amazing. What can't they do? Well, I'll tell you what they can't do is pair both successfully to my phone and play music. <laughs> these skull candies are pieces of crap. But hey, that's all right, baby. Ain't nothing about this trip perfect. <laughs> oh, I guess it is though. Nothing about it's perfect, and everything is perfect all at the same time. That long road stretching off into the distance. So much promise lies at the end of it. So much adventure. So much more to do. 79 Shovelhead 2022 Lowrider ST, baby. Old and new. Black hammer and white lightning. Attack the desert once more. I feel like we were just over there looking over here. Absolutely wild. <laughs> That's why, he, man, you got to do this on a motorcycle. You see so much more. Doing it in a car just wouldn't do. Oh my God, there's just nothing like doing this on the back of a motorcycle, baby. I love it. 
the seams are starting to show on the shovel head. We got oil leaks, exhaust leaks, and everything in between. Me and David woke up. We uh, decided to stay in Flagstaff because it was getting dark and the desert is very dark. When I say dark, I mean dark like it's not dark in the south at all. I don't know what the difference is. But anyway, we stayed here in Flagstaff. We decided not to do the million dollar highway because they're stupid, there's rolling the dice, and there's something in between. I'm trying to kind of go in between total idiocy and rolling the dice. <laughs> Maybe a little more on idiocy, but million dollar highway with uh, how much smoke this is blowing and that exhaust leak wasn't happening. So I am gonna try to at least fix the exhaust leak today because I really don't wanna make that head work any harder than it has to. So let's see. Key to any successful road trip is get a great load in time, get an early start, beat the heat. Maybe we won't call it successful, but it is fun. We're getting started at the crack of noon. <laughs> I think it's about 100 degrees out. And yeah, we still have to get gas, that's right. Well, you know what? I don't think me and David ever learned, you know, separately, of course. He's a couple years older than I am, but I don't think we ever learned how to do anything uh, anybody else's way. We only ever learned how to do it our way. Here we go. This might not work for you, but it has to work for us because this is the only way we know. I feel like my head's bigger. <laughs> People have been saying that to me for years. <laughs> yeah, so we tried to fix the exhaust. That didn't work, but I got new headphones. The other ones weren't working too well. So if you can't fix the noisy engine that sounds like it's breaking from a horrible exhaust leak, just get better headphones and you can't hear it anyway. All right, back on the road with a set of earbuds in so I can't hear the engine falling apart. <laughs> and we're just gonna call that my, uh, my peril sensitive earbuds. Whenever I'm in danger, they just turn the music up louder so I can stay calm. Well, luckily, even though the shovel head is uh, slowly shaking itself apart, we've only got a couple thousand miles to go. So uh, we're almost home basically. Shit, baby, we're halfway there. <laughs> I swear to Bob, me and David are just about the two luckiest bastards to ever hit the road. We're in uh, Arizona, New Mexico, I don't know, one of those states, and I'm getting rained on right now. <laughs> That's just gotta be lucky. It's like seven of the 36 raindrops that fall a year here just hit me. How to play the lottery later. Well, apparently there's a meteor crater out here somewhere. Although, I mean, like, a meteor crater could be so big that, like, this, all the surrounding mountains here could be from a meteor crater. I mean, I don't know, right? $50 for me and David to go see a hole in the ground, the meteor. And it's a whole meteor experience, a multimedia extravaganza. We don't want a multimedia extravaganza with laser light shows about the damn hole in the ground. We just want to see the hole. So we're going to go see if we can get close and see it. At least a glimpse upon the hole in the earth that this meteor made. And we'll just skip the laser light show. Got it up top there. You look like E.T. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, E.T. from South Central, though. <laughs> from the wrong side of the galaxy. E.T., you better phone your friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, this is five minutes down the road. We can take minutes to see if we can steal a peek at this hole in the ground. Me and David ain't paying $50 to see this thing. <laughs> I like the way they do it. Five miles to impact. I swear to Bob, if my motorcycle breaks down while I'm trying to go like steal a peek at a meteor impact zone that somebody's turned into a tourist trap, I might actually get mad. But I'm the only person that I have to be mad at is me. Me and the universe. And so really, the, if my motorcycle breaks down looking at the meteor impact, it's the universe's fault for hurtling a rock through space and time, but directly to the earth, all the places it could hit, it hits here and piques my curiosity enough they have to pull off the road and then my motorcycle breaks down. The universe would be conspiring against me on such a grand scale that it wouldn't be believable almost. Well, if we're willing to do a little off-roading, <laughs> I can see a path that goes up over there. But something tells me, I don't know, I don't, I think there's a conspiracy by Big Crater. Oh yeah, they got a fence around it. Mankind has gone too far. The hubris of man to put a fence around a meteor impact site. No free peaks, apparently. So there's a whole meteor hotel? Look at all those people up there, jealous. Their eyes are gazing upon the wonders of the calm cosmos, the destruction that can be wrought by the universe. Meanwhile, I'm just here going like, ah. no meteor for us, David. The wonders of the destructive force of the universe will forever remain a mystery to me. At least we got to see the edge of it. Oh, and that's a cool van too. I'm glad I saw that. Curse you. 
the first thunderstorm that me and David are running into on this cross country trip. And it's really about to be in Arizona of all places. That, but there it is, lightning strikes and everything. Ah, the winds are picking up and I'm just realizing I don't know anything about rainstorms in the desert. Rainstorms in the south, sure. I know what they look like. I know what precautions to take. As far as a thunderstorm in the desert, I have no idea if that's dangerous or not. I guess we're about to find out. Well, it looks like me and David are getting lucky once again. Thunderstorms over there, thunderstorms over there, and we're about to split right down the middle, baby. <laughs> God loves an idiot. Well, so far so good. We are trucking, baby. Already got a couple hundred miles down. We're aiming to make some time today because uh, <laughs> we've definitely been taking our time. Not that I feel bad about any of that, but we're definitely still gonna stop at a very important place today. We're about to roll over the border into New Mexico. And you know, there's a lot of motherlands out there. There's Sturgis, there's Daytona. There's all these Milwaukee, where the birthplace of Harley Davidson, all these places around the country that are just, you know, held American heritage for motorcycles, but probably the most important place for American motorcycle history is in New Mexico. And we're going there today. New Mexico, baby. Woo. See you later, Arizona. Onward to the birthplace of real American biker culture. Uh-oh. <laughs> I am running out of gas, baby. Well, there we go. Yep, that's a dunner. Almost made it to Gallup. Well, David to the rescue. That was about the fastest gas run I've ever seen. I was I was on the side of the road for less than 10 minutes. Come on now, it's not a motorcycle trip unless you have to pull over on the side of the highway at least once or twice. At least no motorcycle trip I've ever been on. All right, baby, on the road again. Can't keep the shovel down. Well, maybe you can, but not yet. Funny enough, I always see it in other countries. Just a whole bunch of dogs around this gas station that are obviously looking around looking at all the cars looking for food they don't look like they're kept in a house they look dirty but none of them look skinny that's for sure yeah they're just there's probably like six or seven of them running around here <sighs> come on man it's one way to do it <laughs> yeah i don't see the dogs anywhere else except the gas station uh, it seems like they know where to get fed We're officially getting rained on in New Mexico. <laughs> Whatever you say. Well, luckily in New Mexico, you dry off in the wind in about three and a half business minutes. You get rained on in Florida, you're wet for the next three days. Skirting the big storms. We got a big one over there, and I can see the rain coming down on the mountain over there. We got a few drops, but getting away pretty much scot-free. Well, the battery's dying on my camera, so in the spirit of brevity, I'll finish the rest of the story. Side of the road, rewiring the bike. It's on all the time now, uh, but I think we can fix it. We're gonna go pick up a momentary switch, and I will tell you, I've been in some sticky situations before, but that one, uh, that one was was pretty wild. We had we couldn't tape it because there was literally in the pouring rain, there was not a single wasted moment. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it. That was a wild one. The shovel head, it is protesting yes, it's protesting vigorously but it is still proceeding <laughs> oh hope if i turn that on i said it is still proceeding <laughs> hell yeah all right on our way to thunderbird harley davidson uh i don't think they're gonna work on the shovel maybe they might if it wasn't in the shape that it's in right now but uh, they usually don't want to. They usually don't want to mess with something that's cobbled together. But David does want to get uh, his uh, his bike checked out because oh, geez, oh Pete. David had to check engine light, which uh, 
I would just ignore, but look at what I'm on and what David's on. If I was riding a new bike and I had a check engine light that was momentarily on, I would have forgotten about it 1.5 business seconds after it went back off. I might have even ignored it even if it stayed on. All right, I officially uh, lost a bet with David. I expected to come up to Thunderbird Harley Davidson and for them to take one look at the shovel and be like, you gotta be kidding me, get the hell out of here. <laughs> uh, once again, absolutely pleasantly surprised by a Harley Davidson dealership where they came in, they, they helped us out, they looked at it and they go, we got a guy who knows shovels. We think you can help you out. They can't do any major work for it because it is 44 years old, but they can at least give it the once over and make sure I'm not gonna die on my way home. Man. <laughs> How many places can you just walk into a motorcycle dealership and get treated like that? Thunderbird Harley Davidson here in Albuquerque, absolutely class act. We appreciate you guys so much. I wanna talk about a class act. Thunderbird Harley Davidson, Albuquerque. Loaner bike, which David, uh, he loves the power and the handling of the Lowrider ST, but the mid controls are just a little short for him. He's about almost 6'3". So they loaned him a Heritage, which is much more his fit. And I am not gonna say no to riding around the ST while they try and get a couple things figured out on the shovel. Now, they're not gonna work on it because they don't have all the parts just lying around here, so they're not gonna fix the exhaust or some of those other things, but uh, they are just gonna give it a safety inspection for me and uh, maybe fix my stupid wiring. <laughs> Oh, buddy. Ain't it nice having a vintage Harley Davidson? It just makes you appreciate the brand new one so much. Much better? Oh, David, David is, loves the heritage so much better than the ST. <laughs> Me? Uh, I'm not actually the biggest fan of the heritage. This lowrider ST, on the other hand, I could definitely see myself on this thing. Oh, yeah. That definitely makes highway cruising uh, a little bit different, don't it? Oh, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Compared to the shovel head, the four speed shovel head, you click this thing into six gear. And you know, it might not be the right fit for David just because he's a little too tall, but he'd probably be fine if it had forward controls. This thing is amazing. <laughs> it's so much more amazing jumping off the shovel head and getting onto this. It's almost like you can't believe they're made by the same company because this is just so good. <laughs> There we go, man. I don't care if it's on the shovel head or a moped, baby. Uh, although it's awful nice on this lowrider ST. If I got two wheels and an engine, I'm a pretty happy camper. So is David. Well, I promise you guys a visit to the Mecca for motorcycles. The true birthplace of American motorcycle culture. And no, it's not Daytona Beach. It's not Bonneville Salt Flats. It's not Sturgis. There's only one place that we can really all look to and say, this is where we came from. This is where it all happened. This is where our lifestyle was born. All those other places, Daytona, Sturgis, those are for posers, for losers, for wannabes, for weekend warriors. Those aren't for real men, not for real bikers. But if you don't know, why don't you go ahead and get yourself an education? Because there's only one place that real bikers know that they can call home. You better know your roots and respect your elders. And if you want to join these elite ranks of real bikers, you just can't do it without visiting the motherland, Madrid, New Mexico. Smell it in the air. It's all around you. All the history, where we came from. If you're a wild hog, then you know Madrid belongs to us. All right, well, we took the locals' recommendation over at uh, Maggie's Diner, and uh, she said that both places were good, but the holler was better. And so far, it doesn't disappoint. I paid $20 for this hamburger, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, you haven't even tasted it. Yeah, yeah. Good. You pay $20 for a hamburger, it doesn't matter if it's good or not. I'm eating it. Delicious, so good, it's freaking amazing. If it was $20, it wouldn't have to suck much for me to talk crap about it. <laughs> good food and good times here in the birthplace of American motorcycle culture. My trip to Mecca is complete. I can finally call myself a real biker. Thunderbird Harley, good folks, man. You can't always get an old bike worked on, and of course, they don't have parts for shovel heads. Shovel heads don't come in that often, but they hooked me up with what they could and got us back on the road. And a little bit of a safety inspection and some of the stuff they were like, well, you know, you really should fix that. And uh, I would before I left. And I just said, you know what? We're going anyway. All right.
right, let's uh, show off. <laughs> let's roll through the black magic rituals to get this Harley Davidson started. There's a couple different things that you got to do now. But it still starts. Oh, well, we were looking for a place to eat breakfast, and I'll tell you, here in Amarillo, Texas, there are maybe like four different options to a place you can go easily get some food at right off the interstate. Uh, chain restaurants, Mexican food, Mexican food, and Mexican food. So we're eating Mexican food. That was the restaurant, it's not open anymore. <laughs> Denny's it is. I'm sure Amarillo has more to offer than Denny's, but we're not here for long enough to explore. It seems like a cool place though, we'll have to try it again sometime. There's a slight gas leak, but we're on our way anyway. All you gotta do is ride real fast and you use the gas so fast it doesn't have time to leak out and avoid sparks. The shovel is literally held together with duct tape and bailing wire. Like, literally, there's bailing wire on the exhaust and duct tape everywhere else. <laughs> oh, can we make it 1,400 more miles? Only one way to find out, baby. Let's get the hell out of Texas, man. I ain't got nothing against Texas, but after the last time we crossed the country, the experience I had going across I-40, I ain't doing that again. On a wing and a prayer, cross your fingers for old shade tree surgeon of this 79 shovel. <laughs> if we make it, it's gonna be a miracle. Me and David came into Amarillo last night with a just an absolutely insane thunderstorm light show that I almost couldn't believe. I mean, in Florida, the, the thunder clouds are so low, like all the lightning just, it feels like you almost reach out and touch it. Out here, everything looks so high up lightning just looks down like it's thrown down from Mount Olympus by Zeus. I mean it was really really impressive. We were just passing fields and fields of these wind turbines, these propellers out here and the lightning would just crack across the entire horizon and light them all up for a second in the middle of the night while they were flashing red and dude I'll tell you <laughs> Makes me understand why Don Quixote thought they was a dragon because they look absolutely insane in the night. Something I really wish I could have videotaped and shared with you guys. Running into Amarillo at 80 miles an hour in a thunderstorm to drive and rain with the lightning lighting up these propellers on the side of the road. That is not something I will ever forget. Out of nowhere, man, I'm not making this up. I swear to God, this this fella here, Bud, just pulls up on this KTM adventure bike. And I was just going like, yeah, man, I dig your bike, dude. I got a Ducati, it's a piece of shit. He goes, I know, Shade Tree Surgeon, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't even make this shit up. Dude, he did 5,600 miles. He left the 1st of June, and he's been living on the road since, since the 1st of June. He's heading back to Oklahoma. You are truly living the dream. I hope one day I can do exactly what you do. <laughs> That's freaking amazing. A month on the road. <laughs> you see, I don't care how hard bitten you are, how many years you ride, or how long you ride, you put in a few hundred miles in a day, your ass still hurts. I don't care who you are. I left uh, Grass New Mexico this morning. Holy crap, dude. You're freaking trucking, man. <laughs> Wait, you be safe, all right? Yeah, you too. You meet some of the neatest people in gas stations. Just did 5,600 miles, and he tells me he's about to, he's gonna move to Mexico and live there. Well, that guy's doing all right, man. I dig his style. But it was awesome meeting you, man. There we go. It still goes so far. I think next time uh, a KTM 70, 790 like Bud's would probably be a little better choice for this. I think Bud's got the right idea. I don't know how a dude who looks like Bud is on that KTM and my dumb ass is on a 79 shovel. You see, Bud probably had a shovel back in the day and he learned his lesson. <laughs> he goes, I don't fuck around with that shit anymore. Me? I'll never learn my lesson. See you later, Texas. Oklahoma. We all up in you, baby. Uh, if it wasn't for Adam Sandoval's campground here in Oklahoma for K River, Oklahoma... It is a place I probably would never see myself going to twice, but that's also kind of not fair. I'm sure there's a lot of awesome stuff about Oklahoma that I just don't know about. Gotta be something to it, right? Hell yeah. A man on the wing riding in style with his trailer. Oh, he ain't alone either. I love it. That ain't two cool dads out on the prowl. That's two cool grandpas, all right? I know we're finally back in the South because we got Love's Truck Stops back. All right, head to Oklahoma City, baby. I found a Starbucks on Garth Brooks Avenue. 
Oh, oh shit! Anyway, where was I? Living outside the fire, baby. Garth Brooks Avenue. It was meant to be. Where are you going, David? No, oh, I went the wrong fucking way. <laughs> wow, that was dumb. Well, now that we're heading in the correct direction, I have my gas cap. As I was saying, Garth Brooks Avenue. Let's go. Hey, it wouldn't be a road trip if I didn't go the wrong direction at least one time a day. Well, we were hitting the road, but headlight on <laughs> the 79 shovel head has ceased to be. <laughs> it neither heads nor lights. So, quick trip to Wally World just outside of, what city were we just in? It's kind of blended together at this point. Anyway, we're gonna see if we can fix this in the parking lot. Umpteenth parking lot fix on the cross country trip right now. But hey, that's what we, that's, well, that's maybe not what David signed up for. That's why he's riding a lowrider ST. But that's what I signed up for and David just has to deal with it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, David is uh, very supportive. It's been absolutely incredible this entire this time. This is some bullshit. Hey, 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 remember we're filming. Do that oh, when the camera's oh, oh. off. <laughs> oh, I love you. <laughs> yeah, see, adventure. Well, I'll tell you guys this. One of the cool parts about a vintage shovel head or any kind of old Harley, a lot of the parts on this bike, uh, you can find them at Wally World, or at least enough to make it work. As evidenced by our momentary switch and a headlight that works. The adventure continues. Out here in Shawnee, and uh, like I was saying earlier, we broke down in the middle of the road last night. I was rescued by a member of BACA who is choosing to remain uh, anonymous. <laughs> but an absolutely amazing dude who gave me a place to sleep. Everybody's generosity um, and every, all these good people who have crossed my path while I've been here on the road, breaking down and needing everybody's help has been absolutely amazing. And then my man Toolbox here in Shawnee has shovel head parts. Gave me a discount. I didn't say nothing about the videos, nothing about that. Gave me a discount. He goes, hey, listen, man, you're traveling. It's different. Gave me a discount on the part. Didn't charge me the tax. So maybe we'll actually get this thing back to <laughs> but one way or another, but if you find yourself near Oklahoma City or Shawnee or any there, anywhere about, make sure you come say hi to my man Toolbox over here. He's got this amazing shop out here. Tell him hi. Why don't you look at that dog with them, them, them blue eyes over there. <laughs> uh, give that dog a pet and tell him, uh, tell him old Shade Tree Surgeon sent you up here. It's our work area. All these bikes are in line for repairs. And, uh, You're popular. Everything. He runs this place back here. Uh, a lot of bikes in for repair on some services. It's kind of tight, so watch walking through the yard. Yes, sir. Back. Do all complete engine. He's got two big engine stroke engine jobs going. He's, the guy bikes for sale for clientele. Got a 2020 Ultra Limited over here. We're trying to get rid of. Dude. Bring right behind you. Up for sale. I tell you, man, if I'm going to judge a shop by how much work they got. You're doing damn good, man. Well, In high demand. You see that man right there? <laughs> that man right there is the man. That's, That's the, man. the man. He runs my shop back here, man. Need a part? I got a couple. Need a part? 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 Oh my God, man, this is freaking amazing. The man here, he's got a Facebook page and they do a bike night. They had 500 motorcycles at one of them. Uh, so it, again, if you're even in Oklahoma City, it'd be worth making the ride down here to check this out. Dude, I can't make this shit up, dude. We just walked out, we're just about to leave. My man TC, the shop manager here, comes out and goes, he watches the channel too. So as I was saying, we also got a, we also got a tank and for my tank that's leaking and we also, uh, I got a lesson on what viscosity oil shovel head's supposed to use. <laughs> come see these guys come down to their bike night. Dude, you guys got me out of a bind like you Thank you. You got an off camera too. Freaking amazing, man.
say a prayer for old throbbing gristle here because uh, we had to do yet another trip. Well, I mean, I all I did was sit there in the truck while my uh, anonymous friend, a uh, very good man, by the way, who's now going to give me another night of hospitality and let me leak oil over his garage and gasoline, among other various liquids. We had to make another trip back to the toolbox for more parts, and uh, yet she persisted. This shovel head still might make it home. We'll see. Well, here goes nothing. <laughs> I started out about uh, five this morning, leaving from Okemo, Oklahoma. I've had to pull over twice, both from my stupid mistakes. Once because my crossover line fell off because I didn't tighten it last night. I got a new tank on here. The old one was just leaking all over the place. It's wild that I was able to find half a half a shovel head tank in Okemo, Oklahoma. I found a lot of things in Okemo, and none of them were really what I expected, to be honest with you. But that fell off and sprayed gas all over my leg, and then I must have lost more gas than I thought because then I ran out of gas and I thought something else was wrong with the bike and I was flipping out and just realized I had to turn my reserve on. Yet she persisted. Still running. Let's see if we can do 1,200 more miles. Oh, 1,100. I guess they did 100 after Okima. But uh, let's see if we can do 1,100 more miles without having to pull over twice every 100 miles cross-country 4,000 mile maybe over 4,000 mile that leak gas I'll have the gas cap over there <laughs> all right rolling baby I spent a full day and a half working working on the shovel head spent two nights sleeping at my new friend's house in Okima Oklahoma man when I when I rolled into Oklahoma and I said something along the lines of I don't know much about Oklahoma but I don't know why I'd ever come back here. Not in a mean way, just in a, I just don't know what there is in Oklahoma and I can't see why I'd come back here instead of going to Camper for Camper. Well, I learned a lot about Oklahoma and the people that inhabit it. And I, I was treated with such kindness, such respect, and just every, so many people came together in that small town of Okima. I was given a place to sleep, a place to work on my bike. I was, I drank beers. I made a bunch of new friends. It's weird riding this motorcycle across the country. You go like, oh man, I want to see how they did it in the old days. You know, Shovelhead, I want to see how they did it in the 60s and 70s and how people crossed the country back then. And yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm learning a few things about how they did it, but it isn't exactly what I expected because it's ended up being so much more about the people than it is about the bike. But <laughs> the fact that the bike is the way it is, is why you end up meeting the people. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Right now, I gotta make some time because I was traveling across the country with David and he really wants to roll into Tampa together. And I'll tell you what, I, I would really like that too. So he kept on going, which I didn't blame him because I didn't know if I was gonna be able to fix this. I had to, I ended up getting a, uh, a new coil. It wasn't the coil, it was the ignition, so I had to go get a new ignition, but they were both bad, so they both needed to be replaced, and I put a new tank on it, and I gave it an oil change, and I fixed a few other things that were wrong with it, because the tank was just leaking all over the place. So, like I said, I spent uh, two nights in Okima, and a, and a full day and a half working on this motorcycle. So, I, I told David to go ahead, because I didn't know if I was going to have to leave it there and fly home, but we're trucking again, man. We're doing miles. He said he was going to get a, a, a nice little beauty rest and sleep in and wait for my dumb ass to show up on this shovel. Well, hopefully show up on this shovel. That remains to be seen. David's still about 350 miles away from me. So, seeing as I've had to pull on the side of the highway twice in the past 100 miles, nothing is guaranteed right now. Whew, hurtling down the highway, saying goodbye to Oklahoma and hello to Arkansas. Normally, I'd be... Glad to see the backside of Oklahoma and maybe some other people would after all the times I had to pull over the side of the highway in it. But man, the people of uh, Okima and the people of Shawnee, Oklahoma made me feel so good and so special and it made me believe in, you know, it sounds so cheesy and normally I don't like to be this cheesy, but really made me believe that the dream of going out, the whole biker thing and crossing the country and being able to rely on your fellow man is still alive. <laughs> it's, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it now. It, I, I still haven't completely processed how it made me feel, but it was, it was nothing short of, of exactly what I wanted it to be, and I didn't even know it before I stopped there. Well, 
I didn't choose to stop there. I broke down and uh, my man who gave me a place, the Baca member, pulled over to the side of the road and became my became my new dad for a couple days. All right, speaking of dads, let's go find David. Well, I don't know what's going on with this thing, but I am not, my gas mileage is really suffering. I don't know if it's just because we're on the highway, if we're in windy, because we're just windy, I have no idea, but I was getting like 130 miles to a tank, and I'm getting about 100 now. I'm already in reserve, but the closest gas station is over 12 miles away, so. Uh, I really didn't want to walk. I mean, if I was gonna walk, it would've been nicer to do it this morning when it wasn't so hot. Uh, fingers crossed. I don't know why it's getting such poor gas mileage. Now, I can only assume it's because I'm doing way more highway riding, so the RPMs are up, we're going faster, and uh, it's just burning through the gas way quicker. It's the, the pitfalls of a four speed, I guess, but <laughs> I'm definitely gonna have to plane a little better. And the reserve only usually gets me like four or five miles, which I don't know why that is, it's bizarre. So I know it's kind of dangerous, but I'm gonna go ahead and draft this semi just to, just to save a little gas. And I don't do this, I don't recommend this, but once you're behind a semi like this and you're kind of in this little air pocket that they create back there, you barely have to give this bike any gas to get it to go. Oh, hopefully I don't pass out from diesel fumes and hopefully this helps me get to a gas station because previously this bike would not make it 12 miles on reserve. No, I need you. Where are you going? Seven miles left. Things are not looking good. was about to die and now we're on a, a flat plane instead of a slight incline and it's running again. <laughs> I really got to be reaching the end of this gas. Oh, oh we're going up again. <laughs> it's gonna, which means the gas is going to go backwards off the reserve in the tank. Oh, yikes. Which we're going at enough of an incline now that I'm probably running on just what's in the bowl. Five miles. We can do this. All right, we're going down again. Four and a half miles. I might, I might just make it. Oh, oh, three miles. Come on. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Come on. You can do it. You can take me three miles, can't you? I wonder how far I can coast for. Oh, 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 that's it. That's all she wrote. All right. How far... Can I freewheel for? <laughs> for 2.7 miles? I don't know. <sighs> I mean, I can freewheel for a while. Maybe if I get a decline. Doesn't look like it. Looks like we're going up, not down. Maybe some more gas went in there. Nope. That's a negative. I mean, I'm still going faster than I could walk right now, so I'll take it. 20. Still faster than I can walk. Def I mean, faster than I can run, too. I'm just going to take every um, every foot I can get until it's no more. Come on, decline. You can do it. Are we going to come to a complete stop? It looks like it's going down, right? 12 miles an hour. All right. Okay. 10. Uh, well, I mean, I got like half a mile coasting. That's not bad. So I keep hoping that somehow the... This decline will just magically make me start moving again. No, it's not going to. Five miles an hour. Okay. Zero miles an hour. All right. Uh-oh, come on, man. Hey, yeah. we are mobile once again. Will that be enough gas to get 2.2 miles? Made it, baby. That's about all she wrote for Arkansas. As for right now, this breakdown left me with uh, about 36 hours less to complete this trip than I had originally planned on. So we're making miles, baby. We're trucking, heading no whoa. <laughs> Maybe shut up and pay attention to the road there, bud. <laughs> we're, we're trucking, passing the river, leaving Arkansas, heading into Tennessee and Missouri. Hopefully staying alive while doing so. Shoot. This would be a uh, incredibly bad place to break down, I'm gonna go ahead and say. Very, very bad. 
Let's uh, cross your fingers. That would suck. Not only would it suck to break down in, but I'm pretty sure everyone behind me would be pretty angry. Mm, Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, baby. Follow them like dominoes. The shovel head is just smashing through them like a bowling ball through bins. It's unstoppable, baby. Passed up, ready to go, really ready to go. I don't know what it is about South Haven, Mississippi. I met David, we had Texas Roadhouse, and that was about the best thing about this place. We've traveled less than 10 miles in South Haven. We've been taken to a gas station that doesn't exist, been tried to run off the road by multiple semis and cars. Some guy tried to kill us by waving us across and flashing his lights at us while a car was speeding in the lane next to him like 80 miles an hour. Then he flicked us off when we didn't take him up on his offer to Pat, go into a parking lot <laughs> and get hit by a freaking car. You know, I said the same thing about Oklahoma earlier and I said I didn't know anything about it. Well, look at me. I freaking learned something about Oklahoma and I actually really like it. Maybe one day I'll feel that way about South Haven. I'm sure if you live in South Haven, you could probably prove me wrong and show me some really cool stuff about it. <laughs> but as of right now, it's uh, not exactly batting a thousand. See you later, Mississippi. Sweet home Alabama, here we come, baby. Man, Mississippi was annoying this time. I got nothing but love for all my weirdos in Mississippi and of course my man Saddle Tramps there too. And two of my best buds, but like, holy moly, man, if somebody like flicked a switch and as soon as we crossed the Mississippi border and everyone started driving like an asshole. Of course the same switch gets flipped when you go into Florida, that's how I know how to recognize it. We're in the home stretch now, baby. We got about 669, six, hell yeah, nice. 669 miles left on a 4,000 mile trip on a 44 year old Harley Davidson shovel head that I bought sight unseen. We've broken down, we've almost wrecked. We've ran out of gas like five freaking times. We've seen multiple national forests. Me and David Tyler have had the trip of a lifetime. I spent 48 hours or 36 hours or so in Oklahoma, in Okima, Oklahoma, fixing this. I put a new coil on it, a new ignition. Uh, at the last stop, gas stop in Mississippi, uh, my starter actually decided to stop working. Luckily, David used to be a professional football player, so he could push the bike and my fat ass and we got it push started. We're running on a wing and a prayer. We're leaking every single fluid it can leak. We got a new gas tank on it. <laughs> Fingers crossed, baby. I'd really love to make, I'd really love this to make it, make it on its own power. And that's why I'm getting more and more nervous the closer we get to Florida, because the closer we get, if something else breaks, the easier it is to call somebody come pick me up in a truck, but I don't want to do that. I want this 44-year-old shovel head to roll into Tampa on its own power, baby. I got something to prove. I don't know what it is, and nobody really called me out, but I got something to prove anyway. I just wanna, I'm gonna add a little extra right now. That way hopefully we don't have to add any more throughout the whole trip home. I'm just gonna dump the rest of it in there. It's an oil bag, it shouldn't matter if it's a little full. All right, one shot. The starter, as you guys saw yesterday, has ceased to be no longer performs its function. So I'm overfilling the oil a little bit because we got the last almost 600 miles. Guess what? We're going all the way through, baby. All right, y'all, get ready for some heavy breathing. Hopefully a little less heavy breathing this time. We got a pretty good ramp here. All right, one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready. Ah, oh, 
You bastard! I should do the same thing. I'll push it right up there. We'll try again. All right. One more time. Bound. <sighs> Let's not talk about the fact, uh, I'll tell David later when he's not breathing as hard that uh, I didn't have the kill switch on. <laughs> Sorry, man. Whew. The final leg of the journey, baby. Homeward bound, leaving Alabama, heading towards the Florida line. This whole journey has been something else. Right up to the last minute, almost almost in Florida, the starter stops working. We did about 400 miles last night, not getting off the bike to restart it just in case, just filling it up and going. The shovel wasn't super happy with me about that. I don't think it likes to travel that way, but here we are, baby. We got 500 and some, sorry, almost 500 miles left, 487 miles back to Tampa. We had an entire day down, but it looks like the shovel head is going to roll over the border. It's gonna roll over into Florida under its own power. Cross my fingers, a lot can happen in 487 miles. 500 miles, for most people would probably say, ah, you're rolling the dice on a trip with a shovel head like that anyway. And we're rolling up towards the end of 4,000 miles. <laughs> so the fact that it's got a couple little quirks here and needs a, a little bit of tinkering at the end of a 4,000 mile trip, I think that's pretty understandable. Keep a dream in your pocket and a prayer in your heart, rolled shade tree surgeon and throbbing gristle. We go in the distance, baby. I'm constantly trying to prove an imaginary person wrong. I don't know who that person is, and nobody ever said anything, but in my head I just stand up and say, who the hell said I couldn't buy a shovel head sight unseen and ride it across the country? Who said that? Stand up, I wanna see your face. Nobody said that. Um, I just like, I heard it in my head. I'm like, by God damn it, that imaginary person in my head ain't gonna tell me what to do. We're doing it, baby. <laughs> and, uh, I'm not making any of this up. There's no camera crew. There's it's just me and a GoPro on my helmet and a and a little point and shoot camera in the front bag there. And David doesn't even hold a camera for me. So it's it's literally just us and the amazing people who has helped us along the way. Circus Bear Moto, you know, keep keep him in your thoughts, and I'll have his GoFundMe link down below for his wreck. <laughs> my man from Baca in Okiva, Oklahoma, the Jason Busted Nux in St. George, all these people who helped us along the way, and of course you guys, all the words of encouragement, and without you guys watching the channel, um, I wouldn't be doing stupid ass shit like that, so I don't know whether to hug you or hit you, I think hug you, I like doing stupid stuff. Hell yeah! Who said we couldn't do it? Well, we ain't there yet. But we're back in Florida, baby. Woo! <laughs> back to the wang. Oh, David, you bow, oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> I didn't realize what he was doing. He got back to Florida first. <laughs> All right, we have entered the wang. We're back in our homeland, back in the swamps, baby. Let's see if it's got another few hundred miles in it. Well. That's my usual welcome back to Florida. <laughs> Getting rained on. That's all right though. We're only uh, 280 miles from home. Uh, I could stand with a little rain anyway. Uh, after 10 days on the road, boy, I'm ripe. <laughs> I keep forgetting to record because uh, I'll be honest, I'm kind of zonked right now. I'm just trying to make it back, to <laughs> make it back home. But uh, since we can't start the bike again, uh, and I never know if we're gonna be able to push start it or not. And we've just been kind of doing a uh, NASCAR pit stop. So I'm doing the whole 500 miles of just jumping off, leaving it idling, filling it up with gas and hauling ass again. Not exactly the most comfortable thing to do, but I'll live. Oh, one for you. And one for you. All right, let's get this thing moving for it overheats. Hey, good, David. All right, back at it. Okay, another 100 miles. 
<laughs> Ooh. I mean, I know like everyone probably thinks I'm, I'm I'm trying to act like Billy Badass over here, like doing all these miles and iron butts and stuff like that. But the reason why I do them is because I get off I get off every hundred miles and I rest. Uh, if you don't do that, it, it's really rough. I'm not gonna lie to you. Homeward bound, baby. We are 200 miles away from Tampa and you can tell from the large stain that uh, we're in trouble and desperate times call for desperate measures. I assume that we have uh, Raymond Tyler as well to thank for this one. <laughs> well, this is probably not going to work, but we're going to try. As at this point, trying's all we got. Yep. so far it doesn't appear to be squirting oil out of any out of too hard at least either that or it's just freaking out of oil one or the other <laughs> I have no idea I assume the oil pressure light was working before so maybe it works now I don't freaking know man come on baby you can, it's just, we broke down so far away from a gas station. Of course, you don't get to pick where you break down, do you? Especially not on a shovel head. So far, so good. Come on. I'm getting, a, I'm getting crusty, crusty glide vibes all over. This is bark party all over again. We're so close. Well. We're a little farther than 200 miles away from hell when Bar Party finally gave up the ghost, but <laughs> come on, man. I guess like equal to the distance that it went from Helen to Tampa and from Portland to Tampa, maybe it's about the same. Just a couple more miles. All right, we're almost there. Come on, give me a couple more miles here. Of course, the chances of them having 60 weight oil at the gas station are low. We're actually going to make it to the freaking exit. This seems, this seems extremely unlikely. David would just go in like, I finally get it when you say so much stuff happens that you feel like you're making it up. Like, I feel like I'm making this up. We just hammered a piece of wood into, into the top of the rocker box here. All right, which way is the closest gas station? Come on, baby. Go, 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 go. Don't fuck with me here. Go. Oh, Chevron right there. You believe it freaking made it all right 190 miles back to tampa holding the sucker in okay let's go <laughs> oh my god my buddy life of winter and anthony who they both have shovel heads as well you guys remember them from the time i took my chopper to barber although jason was riding his triumph they just said hey we're gonna meet you at the rest stop they go do you need us to bring anything and i go yeah man it's a miracle if you got an extra one we're on our way well looks like on top of everything else i'm also gonna get rained on <laughs> Exactly uh, the most comfortable scenario I can imagine, but it's uh, more comfortable than being on the side of the road walking, I guess. All right. Well, I lost my grip on the piece of wood and it fell out, but David had the foresight to say tape it on there. And if I hadn't, it would be gone right now. But now, um, the tank is falling off. So. Um, I really don't want to lose the tank on the highway. We've got 50 more miles, y'all. At this point, I'm running on pure spite. 
Yeah. All right. One more time. Come on, man. <sighs> I probably fell out from it in the tank. It doesn't matter. I'm sorry, David. <sighs> Fucking Jesus, man. All right. I know it'll start. Damn it, dude. Right. You wanna catch your breath? Yeah. Okay. Fucking I'm sorry, dude. Alright. Hey, <laughs> 3,000 plus miles. <laughs> Here at the end. Yeah. Oh fuck. If worse comes to worse, I'll push it up there myself while you catch your breath and we'll push it down. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Okay, time to put you to the top of the hill. Just how's it going, man? How you doing? Not bad. I just need to push start it, so I'm just pushing it up to the top a little bit. You get it out of fuel or something? No, no, I just, it doesn't start. I got to push start it. I'm just going up there. I appreciate you stopping to check on me, though. I can't, we can't, you got something to add up? We got you to put on the trailer, though. Nah, it'll start. I just got to get it to a uh, little bit of a downhill is all. Hey, thank you for stopping, man. Dude, thank you, man. Appreciate you, man. side of <laughs> one side of our piece of wood has officially outlived its usefulness we're gonna have to recut the other side because it's not oh, it's not sticking in there at all anymore it's cool it's gonna work man I just had to fucking reshape the piece of wood the one side had just worn in too much I said the one side had worn in too much I just had to cut it off and I'll put it in again I stopped on a hill this time. Uh.
Okay. Oh, it's splitting in. I see what you mean. God fucking damn it. I think I can hold it, David. Damn it, dude. this shit up man i wish i was saying that it was falling apart this hard in the last 200 miles i'm not this is exactly exactly how <laughs> i wish i was making it if i was making it up i wouldn't my mouth wouldn't be so dry and i wouldn't be breathing so heavy and i wouldn't be so stressed out i'm not making it up at all 55 miles come on <laughs> We're passing Kroom! <laughs> We're all earthbound, baby! Kroom and Wiki Wachi! Oh my god! Come on, you got 40 miles left in you! <laughs> of course! Oh, you fucker! You're gonna rain on me one more time? God damn it! Oh, at least no one will see that I was crying. <laughs> I think we're gonna make it! <laughs> Wide fucking open! On a wing and a prayer, baby! That's it! We're fucking making it! I got oil all over my visor, oil all over the bike. Hopefully there's a little oil left in the bike. <laughs> 70, 70 miles an hour, rolling into Tampa, held together by bailing wire, duct tape, and pieces of wood. Oh my God. 4,000 miles across America, Portland to Tampa, on a shovel head. Here we fucking go. Never give up. <laughs> Never give up. 
Never give up! Never surrender, baby! <laughs> oh my god, while well, me and David Tyler are still drawing breath, there's no way this thing ain't making it to Tampa! Not a fucking chance! Nothing can stop us! Oof, I am running a little bit late, so I'm not sure if anybody waited for me at the rest stop. I said I'd be uh, like an hour and a half ago. But we'll see. Yes! They did! Hey, you guys got some oil? <laughs> See, there's enough y'all to push start me. Oh, there's enough people here to push start me. Holy shit, dude. Can I borrow everything? <laughs> do, do you guys don't have any beer, do you? Oh, okay. Okay, I'm gonna... Was there ever any doubts in anybody's mind? Black Hammer and White Lightning! <laughs> Tampa, Florida on a wing and a prayer, baby. Greeted, of course, by the Shovelhead Brigade over here. On uh, what broke? We lost a um, turn signal here, but I don't use signals anyway. Uh, I literally haven't pushed them once. I don't know if they work. They might. Uh, I don't use them. We lost this, but it's still hanging on. It's bolted in up here. So the exhaust is held on by bailing wire there. Um, so I lost the fuel crossover that fell off and was squirted like a gallon of fuel on my leg And I couldn't get it to go back on so I took a zip tie I tied it around there and then I taped the zip tie up so it held so there was upward pressure you see I see so on engineering I don't know if you know anything about that and of course The wood it works it perfectly as a plug. Thank you Raymond Tyler David's dad taught him that trick and it uh, worked like a champion um, Bailing wire on the exhaust here. How did I say that one? That might be it. We lost an exhaust bolt back here. Oh yeah, this bolt, I can't get, for the life of me, I can't get that one to stay in. But if you just keep putting more brake fluid in it, it works. Your taillight's still on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look over here. We had to rewire it. First the relay on that side went bad. Then the ignition switch went bad. And then the actual start button went bad. I like that you did all your electrical yeah. connections. So real tape. first we had to run power. <laughs> first we had to run direct power over to the keyed ignition from the battery, and that worked for a while. And then that stopped working, so we had to run direct power, and then we had to turn it off. So that's why that uh, interrupter switch is in there, um, so I can actually turn the bike off because it's got direct power at all times now. What happened after that is the starter button stopped working. I had to just use a pair of pliers on the starter down there because the kitch. The kick stopped working. The clutch broke on that, so no kicker. Oh my god! So eventually that broke too. So the starter's broken now. We went all the way down the line, and now nothing works. And you guys are gonna have to push me. Got you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like AJ. Push right here. AJ's gonna have to push me. <laughs> now, oh yeah, the tank broke too. So first the one, the right-hand side tank, sprung a leak on the seam, and it was. Pouring gas. I got a replacement tank for 50 bucks. You believe that? In the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma, Okima. Those guys are amazing. But then what happened is the tabs on the tank broke off like 50 miles ago. So the tanks literally like fell apart in my lap. And I was holding them with my knees. <laughs> so next time the oil plug fell out and I had to fix that, I was like, well, we might as well throw some duct tape on the tanks. Yeah. <laughs> what happened is, is these headlights are actually really easy to find. The problem is, is everything behind it is fucked up. So whenever you put a new bulb in it, it lasts about one or two bumps and then it explodes. So after you put a few bulbs in it, you just go ahead and go LED upgrade. <laughs> hey, no cops pulled me over. It's also got a tag from a Honda. Or six years expired. <laughs> the Daymakers, yeah, it's a special upgrade. Anyway, it's here. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I've not been eating well on this trip, so I've gained a little weight too, so you're really gonna have to put your back into it. And I'm, my legs are tired, so I have to start sitting on it. I can't jump on it. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to push me to start me like a dozen times, dude. <laughs> Whew. Oh, what are friends for? But I need a damn beer. All right, I'm in Tampa. <laughs> in Tampa, does that really count though? I gotta take it all the way to the beer. The trip ain't over until I put a beer in my hand at the dirty shame, all right? Let's go, baby. <laughs> 
Quota's making these last few miles really rough. <laughs> Will the shovel head make it? Will my GoPro make it? Well, I'm probably gonna ice this GoPro on this last leg. What can GoPro survive the cross country trip and gets iced 20 miles from the dirty shame? Ah, who knew? Having oil all over your visor and then it raining makes visibility kind of difficult. <laughs> I'm earning this beer. Um, it is getting very windy and the rain is torrential. Riding with one hand right now is. Uh, <laughs> doesn't seem like the best option, but the other option is run out of oil. Oh, we got about zero visibility right now. I'm just kind of looking at the white lines in front of me, and usually the headlight would light them up, but uh, yeah. <laughs> the LED upgrade isn't working that well. being able to catch a f***ing break, man. Holy shit. Come on, now. F***ing Jesus, man. Come on. Oh, my God. Oh, I lost the cylinder. Come on, man. F***ing Jesus. Christ, dude. Come on. This is not good. Your motherfucker with your flashers on. Holy crap, dude. <laughs> I'm in Tampa, but I can still break down in Tampa. What the fuck? Ah, I can't close my visor because I'm blind with it down. The rain feels like getting shot in the face with a BB gun. Oh my god, you fucker. Come on! Oh, it keeps dropping a cylinder in this f***ing rain. Come on, four more miles. Give me a f***ing break here, man. There's no way my GoPro is still working. It's got to be dead. Come on! Die. I swear to God, if you die in the way of the shame, I'm gonna flip my shit. Give me a f what the f is going on here, people? Go! Go! Jesus f***ing Christ, man. If this bike breaks down here. I swear to God, you mother are dead! We made it. And just, I don't know when my camera turned off, but I'll tell you this. I was running every single red light and cussing every single person on the road in that white out rain. It was a freaking nightmare. But what's really cool is that we come back to the dirty shame and Richard Boom put the hand pumps back in. So we have Fuller's ESB and Fuller's London Porter on hand draw over there on cask. That's an awful nice treat to come back to town to. Well, that was about it for me filming after uh, 10, 11, 12 days. I can't remember how many days on the road. I was on the road with the shovel head. Did not have it in me to film one single more thing that night. We were soaked to the bone. It was just the, the amount of motions that I was feeling was incomprehensible and I just could not express them in any way, shape, or form that night on camera. And uh, I also haven't been able to express them since then either. I really don't know what I was feeling. Like I always say, I'm always trying to prove somebody wrong, but nobody's actually said anything to me and I don't know who they are. There, There's someone out there who's saying I can't do the things that I wanna do, but I don't know who they are, if they actually exist or if they're just in my head, but I'll be damned if I'm not gonna prove them wrong every single time. And obviously I could not done this, have done this alone. There's just so many people can together and I think one of the biggest things I took away from this besides just that I'm an, an idiot and I will literally just I will freaking 
to cut off my nose to spite my face. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. There's something wrong with me. I just don't know what it is. But what I really learned from this is that what it really meant to be a motorcyclist, to be a biker in the 60s and 70s, to be on these machines traveling across America, and you had to. The machines broke down. They weren't reliable. You had to rely on these people. You had to rely on strangers showing you kindness, other bikers who are in this lifestyle just going like, yeah, did you break down? We're gonna help you. And that's still alive. It's still out there. And I'm literally, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it weeks later now. All the guys in Okima, Busted Nucks, Circus Bear Moto, every single person who stopped and helped me along the way, those guys at Thunderbird, Harley Davidson, it's, it's real and it's still alive and it sounds cheesy, but like I am just so humbled by the amount of kindness I was shown by strangers and how people just like looked at what I was doing and said, hey, you're trying to get down on the road in an old motorcycle? We got you, bud. And after that, you know, I've got so many people to thank, but the number one person to thank, of course, is uh, my niece and business partner, Shay Lisi, uh, because we do all this stuff together. And of course, my man, David Tyler from Forgotten Angels, because David Tyler is exactly the same kind of insane that I am. And that's a very rare thing and uh, probably pretty dangerous for the both of us, but it is a whole lot of fun. So I can't wait for the next adventure. I uh, hope which Shaylisi is going to be a part of next time as well, where we all go crazy together. Coming up soon, don't worry about that. And until that happens, this Friday, we're gonna be at Burt's, uh, Burt's Black Widow, July 29th after 5 p.m. We're gonna be there for their bike night. Myself, Shaylisi, we're gonna be hanging out there drinking beers. Well, I'll be drinking beer. Shaylisi will just be hanging out. We've got a shirt that come, that's commemorating the Shovelhead's journey across America. If you get the Dark Tower reference, you get it. And if you don't, it's still a pretty badass shirt. You can only buy that shirt at Burt's Barracuda and Burt's Black Widow. It's an exclusive, except for uh, a pre-sale that's gonna go on for about 24 hours after this video ends. If you manage to snag one during that time, you'll be able to get one. That's been open from uh, the people who support us on Patreon uh, before that, and they've been able to grab one. I appreciate all you guys who couldn't do these trips with out y'all for everybody else you got 24 hours from right now <laughs> to grab a pre-order after that the only place to get those is at first barracuda and first black widow till next time y'all keep it weird